Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at installing Eclipse, which is a integrated development environment. So hopefully by now you've installed the Java SDK um, and what you need is some kind of editor to work in because uh, Java programming is basically about creating text files and in those text files, instead of writing in a human language, for example like English, you write in the Java programming language and then the software development kit that you've already installed will, behind the scenes, turn those into actual Java programs. Now, you can write Java code in any kind of text editor, even in sort of Windows Notepad or um, Mac text editor, whatever you like. But there is specialized software designed to make it easy to work with Java code. So one option would be, one good option, for example, would be to use a an editor that's actually designed for programmers to work with, like a, a programmer's editor. And at the moment, I'm, I'm here at the end of 2019, um, Visual Studio Code is actually a great option, uh, but we, we won't be using it in this course, and I, I will explain why. But if you search for Visual Studio Code, so this this is not Visual Studio. Um, Visual Studio is a is a what we call an IDE, an Integrated Development Environment. Um, but we're not going to be using that either, although I think you can. So if you search for Visual Studio Code, uh, you'll you'll find that there's a this is actually a an open source programmer's editor from Microsoft, uh, and it, it's it's really really good. It's really excellent. I highly recommend it. And you can install all kinds of plugins in it that make it work with various languages, including Java. Now, the problem with using a, a code editor to do your programming is that you've still got to somehow compile your programs. That is, you've got to take the text that you write and turn it into an actual piece of software and then actually run it. So one thing that... Um, probably a fair few Java programmers actually do is they will use a programmer's text editor like Visual Studio Code, like Emacs or even Vim, uh, something like this. And then they'll, on the command line, they'll actually compile and run their programs. I'm not going to be um, using the command line in this course, I don't think. And the reason for that is that I'm using a Mac and you may be using Windows or Linux or a Mac, I don't know. Uh, and the actual sort of command line commands that you would need to write in a console to compile your Java programs would be slightly different between different operating systems. And I want to make this course in a way that it's good for anyone using any operating system within reason. And another reason that I'm not going to be using the command line is that most professional Java ed Java programmers do actually use a thing called an IDE. Now IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment and that's a fancy way of saying um, a text editor that's specialized for usually for a particular programming language and it will also have buttons to do things like compile your programs, in other words take, take the text and turn it into a program, an actual piece of software and run the programs so that we don't have to mess around with the command line at all. And the one that we are going to use in this tutorial is a very excellent, very popular, completely free IDE called Eclipse. So I'm going to ask you to search for uh, Eclipse for Java developers because that's what, what we will be using. Um, Eclipse, you can use it to write code in various programming languages and of course we want the one that's specifically configured to develop Java programs. So if you search for the Eclipse IDE for Java developers and go to that at eclipse.org and then download the one for your operating system. I can see here it says uh, a newer version of this is available, is available here so I'll just click on that link, get the latest version of it. You really want the absolute latest. Uh, in this case. 
and uh, download the version for your operating system and install that. Uh, and then all you have to do is, is start it up. Um, sometimes people find that there are error messages when Eclipse starts. Uh, Eclipse does depend on you already having installed the Java SDK, so you have to do that first. Um, if you've done that and then you install Eclipse and you get an error message, again, don't be afraid to put that error message into Google. So if it says, you know, no matter how ob obscure it is, if it says something like cannot find Java, then in type into Google, Eclipse cannot find Java or whatever the error message says and see what the solution to it is. This, this initial few steps are, is, are particularly frustrating or they can be. Hopefully everything will go smoothly, but some people are going to find that this doesn't go smoothly. And at that stage, it's really easy to just give up and say, I, I don't know what's going on here. It's too confusing. It's normal to feel confused at this stage, especially if you do encounter an error message, but you just have to get through this particular bit. And once we've got to the point where we can actually run, run Eclipse, write a program and run the program, and that's all working, then we'll have a lot smoother journey. So it's just this initial bit that's a bit tricky. So after you've installed Eclipse, start it up and you should see something that looks like this. And Eclipse usually starts up with, um, with a screen that looks similar to this. When Eclipse starts, it might ask you to set your workspace directory. And what that is, it's just a folder where Eclipse is going to put your code. So you can create that folder in advance if you like. Uh, put it in your, your documents folder or whatever. Call it workspace, call it anything you like. It doesn't matter. And then you have to just tell Eclipse to put your code in that folder. So in other words, you set your Eclipse workspace to that folder. And if you change your mind later, um, in one of the menus here, in the file menu, there's this option to switch workspace. And you can use that option to switch to a different folder. By default, it will be called workspace, but it doesn't have to be. That's, that's not important at all. So you can set that to wherever you like. Because I'm on a Mac here, um, my uh, directory structure looks like this. It starts with a slash. On Windows, it will probably look a little different, but that, does, that doesn't matter. Okay, uh, so hopefully you can get to this point where you can see Eclipse running. And then we don't need this. Um, we don't need this whole screen here. So I'm, I'm just going to close it with the sort of cross in the corner here, or ho however you close windows on your system. And then we'll see something that looks like this. Quite intimidating, but as you'll see, um, it's not so bad. We're going to learn it bit by bit, and by the end of this course, you'll feel, I think, fairly familiar with using Eclipse. Eclipse has an absolute ton of features and you can even install more via plugins, but we won't need most of those features. Uh, so there's no need to be frightened of it. Um, it is a bit intimidating when it starts up, but you'll see it's, it's not so bad. Okay, in the next video, we will look at actually creating a Java program. And until then, happy coding.